Now, Heartland Sports with Luke Randall. You know, guys, it's the summer. High school's out, but we have a cornucopia of sports today. We're going to start with basketball out in Heron, Illinois. Waltonville and Vianna, their varsity squads facing off at Heron High School. And we are treated to quite the game. Solid shooting, but what really worked was the post play. Neither team is afraid to attack the interior. This turns into a game of who is going to score inside consistently. And you can tell it is close. When Waltonville scores, Vianna answers right back. It would go down to the final possession. In fact, we have it here. This is the penultimate one. About 15 seconds left. Vianna now goes up by one. The Spartans trying to steal it in there, or take it in the final moments. About five seconds left. They eventually decide, hey, let's go inside. Go for the win. They don't get the first shot. Second effort. Buzzer. No, it does not go. Vianna wins by one, but Waltonville's head coach, Anthony Lowry, has a very good takeaway from what he saw today. We're not worried about wins and losses. You know, it's, it, it's, it's just about developing. Developing the depth here today was good for us. Um, and going forward down the stretch of the season, we're going to need more than just two guys. So uh, that's what we're looking for. Then with Vianna, the Eagles learning the new system under their new head coach, Berlin Brower. Brower says the guys really learning how to operate in these close games. I understand the execution's huge. And uh, we've got to make certain we execute our stuff late. We, we're not going to go out there and just out talent people. So uh, like you see, I think you can tell we're learning how to execute and we're able to win some close games. Let's go back over to the river to Missouri. We've got summer baseball. We caught up with Cape Legion at the Big Nuts Classic in Cape Central, and we spoke to pitcher Brandon Plot to see how the season's going. Earlier in the season, we probably struggled a little bit. Some of our pitchers, including me, struggled with the zone, but here recently, I think we've slowly started to figure out, find our groove, and really get dialed in. Cape Legion Post 63 facing the Moberly Sixers tonight. This was a very hot and sticky game. Both teams staring straight into the sun. The pitchers aren't, so they have a bit of an easier go. Sixers eventually would get things going. They would actually score right here to take a 1-0 lead. They'd eventually take a narrow 4-3 win on the evening. Now the Nuts Classic continues at Cape Central in Charleston over the weekend. The championship game is in Charleston Sunday at Hill House Park. Meanwhile, at Capaha, several good games tomorrow in the Capaha Classic, including the St. Louis Gamers versus the Missouri Bulls. In the prospect lead, Thrillville, a commanding win over Chillicothe. These two squads expected to be the ones with the best shot at the title in Iowa. Cape, the Catfish, defeat the Clinton Lumber Kings. Catfish did not get to a great start, but they really had a lot of their guys out at regionals, so they weren't at full strength for quite a while. Now that everyone's back, Cape has been one of the hottest teams in the league. Tomorrow, Sykeston star guard PJ Farmer will announce his commitment for basketball. He'll join Rusty Hendricks on SEMO ESPN tomorrow morning at 9. He's got several good offers, including SEMO, Mizzou, and Ole Miss. There's just one team left in the heartland in the Missouri Helmet Challenge. It's the Jackson Indians. Right now, they're facing the North Point Grizzlies. Winner of the matchup will be in the final eight for the competition to find the best football helmet in the state. Voting on X closes tomorrow afternoon. And the Stanley Cup Finals is going to a Game 7. Edmonton will try to be the first team since 1942 to overcome a 3-0 deficit in the Finals.